Okay, I think you can see everything. Good evening. Happy Saturday. I'm Serafina. My Facebook page is Serafina World. Serafina's World. My Instagram is Serafina Angel, and I have an Etsy shop that is Serafina's World. This evening, I have prepped my mom dresser drawers, my second set of them. I did a base coat of chocolate from Dixie Bell. Um, for this project, I did use Dixie Bell. You don't need to use Dixie Bell. Use any kind of paint that's a thicker paint and that is going to stick really well. Um, I have DIY also. I've got paints from Michaels and Walmart and there's enough love in the world for all the paints and hopefully enough shelves at my house for all the paints that I want. So in my feed on my Facebook page, Serafina's World, I put all of the different colors on there that I'm using as well as pictures of the different products. This will actually go pretty quick. Um, I went ahead and taped my drawers off. They were a perfect eight inches, so it made it easy to do four inches on each side, which most of the reclaimed boat boards I see are considered two by fours. Um, also, most of the reclaimed boat boards are very expensive, which is why a lot of people like me do faux um, or attempt to do faux. Let's clean this off just a bit so I don't get any drag. Okay. So this is the tool that I'm going to use to paint with. Just that. I have an extra little one here that I'm just going to scrape off if I get any kind of dried on it. The paint colors are in the list also. So the first color I'm going to use is Honky Tonk Red. Just give it a little shake. And that's exactly what I want is that little piece out of there. Um, I recommend at home, if you're going to do this, go ahead and kind of line up your paints and decide which paints you want where. The first set of drawers, I just kind of randomly pick things, which is what I would do now if I wasn't doing the live and wanted to give you all a list of what I'm using. So I'm just going to put the paint, scoop it off, and I'm going to lightly drag it across. It doesn't need to be perfect. It shouldn't be perfect. The more imperfect that it is, the more weathered your boat wood will be. Now you're going to probably get a few little scrapes like that. That's fine. Paint will go back over that. This is a little hard stretching over. Let me try to get in here. Once I get rid of that paint, I honestly, I just start dipping. I don't clean this in between times at all. This one's just not going on super smooth for me. That's okay. There we go. putting this first coat on and letting it dry really quick um, as I go through these because I don't want to blend my paints. Um, I want them to have distinction of colors. Um, you see I dripped a little bit over there. That's fine. Keep going because the more mixed up it is, the better it's going to look. Just cleaning off some dried paint that's giving me some drag marks. That's the whole reason I have the small one here. All right, so the next one I have blueberry as my base color. You can see I took what was on my 
spatula, my joint knife, and rubbed it on here. I'm going to be mixing it, it up a lot as I go. With this, you want to hold it super, super lightly. Are you going to get some dried mix in there? Like you're almost barely holding on to it. You can even glob some paint on if you want, like that. Give it some more texture. The more texture you have, the more it's going to look like your weathered boat boards, or your reclaimed boat boards, I suppose it is. See how I have little scratches in there? That's fine. That's going to add to my overall end texture. This is really nice and thick. Kind of like super thick yogurt thing. If this bleeds underneath, don't worry about it. This is going to add to the overall look on the end. So basically, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Let it do what it's going to do. Throughout, I'm going to kind of smear whatever color I've been using down to the next one. And I scrape my end off. Okay, I don't see any comments coming up, so I'm not sure if anybody's joined me live. If they haven't, that's okay. Um, just type in replay if you're watching the replay. I'm just not sure if I'm getting comments because I haven't used this equipment before like this, and I haven't tried to do a live like this before. So if you come on, please at least say hi. And if you're just joining me, I'm Serafina. I'm doing faux reclaimed boat wood. Let's see, which one am I using? I'm using apricot for this one. So faux reclaimed boat wood. I'm using a four inch joint knife and I'm not gonna do any distressing when I get to the end. And you see, yeah, I just dropped paint on the other side. That's fine. Smear it on there. It doesn't need to be neat. It doesn't have to be neat. The more texture you have, the better it's gonna look in the end. And And I tend to get a lot of paint on me when I do this. So with this chalk paint being nice and thick as this dries, it creates a difference in levels. And that is really nice when it catches on the other paint colors. All right, so we're gonna rub it there. A little extra there, because I like to mix the colors and it makes it look better. All right, I need just, just, just a little bit more time um, for this to dry. So I can start putting colors on top of it. And if I would have thought about it, I would have probably got my heat gun out. Um, I do own a hair dryer. It is somewhere. I'm not sure where that somewhere is. Um, if you see, I've had drips on the bottom. That's okay. It'll just look like it ran in between the boards. When I get to the end, just clean my spatula off on the end. Typically, the ends would have been butted up against each other, so 
they wouldn't be fully painted. It would just be any paint that seeped down in between. There we go. Okay, well, we let this dry a little bit more. I'm going to give this a good scrape. So we don't get the drag marks on there. That's actually paint from earlier today or yesterday when I was working on these also. When I did my test, um, the voice sounded okay. It sounded like it was loud enough. So um, just let me know if this is loud enough. Do I need to talk louder? Am I talking too fast, too slow? Not enough details, too many details. I really tried to um, set the camera up so you could see what I was doing with this instead of just seeing me. Uh, because you're, that's what you're much more interested in, is you're interested in seeing how to do this and how to do it at home. Okay, I do have dry. It's not completely dry. Um, and I just put paint on myself. That's... So, yeah. Painting for me is a full contact sport. I tend to get it on me. <laughs> All right, so while this is not fully, fully dry, it is dry enough for me to start dragging some paint over it. I am picking up the cobalt blue. Let me see. Okay, you can still see that. Well, wow. it's hard to see through that bright light. No wonder everybody always squints when they're trying to look through there. I don't think I have one of the little foam lids on there, or I do, it's just gone through it. There we go. That is a mess. Good thing I'm okay with messes. So I'm just really, really, really lightly, 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 lightly dragging that along. I'm barely holding on to it. So the more dry spots get, the better they look. That's looking kind of nice and chippy. Let's see. Give this a little blue. Like I said, I, I mix my stuff through. It looks better when it has a bunch, a bunch of colors on it. Um, if you are afraid of contaminating your jars, I would suggest getting um, like plastic cutlery and dip into the jars and then put some on it. But honestly, I'll tell you, I use my finger and then just add a little bit more on it. As that undercoat dries, the paint that you're pulling over top of it drags really nicely. So um, this would be a good time for me to tell you why I chose to use the um, essentially a large palette knife. Um, I'm in Nissa's classes, the Nissa and Nat membership group, and I got really used to using um, palette knives to paint with. So I looked through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of the boat boards, and that kind of gave me an idea of the colors I wanted to get. Um, but I wasn't super stoked about the amount of distressing. 
Um, I found one lady that did something cool with a two by four and that, yeah, I'm not wasting that much paint pouring it in a dish. So, hey, I think I have a larger spackle kind of thingy. Let me go get that spackle kind of thingy. And it's four inches, it's perfect. So with my perfect four inch joint knife, flexible, pictures are in the feed of the supplies that I'm using. Um, it was just a natural fit for me to grab a palette knife type thing and paint after I've been doing it. Um, the bottom coat, I put a coat of wax on it. I got that from Dion at the Turquoise Iris because I don't want to mess my bottom coat up so much. I don't want to accidentally mix the paint in. I want it to still look dark wood at the bottom of it. Okay, so this color I have is Colonel Mustard. Let's see. Let me scooch this over. And very, 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 very lightly dry. Because mine is still kind of wet, I'm still getting a little mixing. That's okay. Um, with my red and blue, I really want a little bit of yellow in there. You always seem to see the yellow with the red and the blue. And it works because they're primary colors. It's okay if it doesn't work if you put colors on there that totally don't mix well because this is supposed to be weathered boat wood, which maybe somebody painted over an ugly color they didn't like, but now it's just coming back through. So basically, I challenge you to just kind of grab colors as you go. Don't necessarily pair them up. Um, let the colors speak for themselves. And often the weirder boards is the one that turn out that I like the best. Yep, finger, finger painting, finger dipping here. I think these boards are going to little, look a little bit more roughed up than the ones on my other side. That's okay. It's supposed to be reclaimed boat wood, not perfect wood. my thoughts are is if it has the little scratches of other colors of paints on it that's probably bumped against other boats in the harbor all right let me get a really quick drink Okay, I think I'm reasonably satisfied with that. Now, let's see what color am I doing. I am putting Florida orange on over the apricot. Okay, I still don't see any comments on my Chromebook, so I don't know if anybody's making comments or not. Okay, load up the palette knife or the spatula. Honestly, if you go to your kitchen and get a good spatula, you can do it with that too. Um, and just very, 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 very gently hold it. If you press down, it's going to take up what's underneath. And you don't want to do that because you just want it to be distressed as we go. So I'm very
barely, 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 barely holding this. Um, I do like some empty spaces that shows the uh, brown boat underneath um, at the bottom as well as right around where the tape is. Um, I think it makes it look really cool. So I've got some orange. Still gonna just add a little bit to one of the other boards. Because, and as I barely put it on there and skip it, that's what starts making it look really nice and weathered. Okay, so, let's see. Yeah, I probably need a little bit of orange on that, don't I? Or maybe I'll grab another color. Eh, I'll put more orange. So just make it up as you go. It doesn't have to match. Ooh, that's really pretty right there. How it's mixing together. That's really nice. Um, when this dries... I am not going to seal it, um, with the exception on the top of my dresser. Since this is Dixie Bell, it dries to a really nice finish that does not need to be sealed. Um, so I'm just, on my drawers and stuff, I'm just going to leave that on there. Any that runs over, I just smear along the bottoms and the sides. And that gives me the look of the, the run-through paint. I stripped in between the boards. Like I said, I get my fingers dirty. I get dirty. I mix the colors. So let me show you taking, let me show you as I take the tape off. Let me get these a little bit closer. So what I will do is once I get the tape off, I will wait until this side dries because I've got to put tape on the other side. And it's okay when tape spill, um, the paint spills over, it adds to it. But I will do a part two to this and I will go ahead and put down that first layer so we can get good and dry so I have lots of texture for it to grab onto these other paints and then that'll give you a look of what they look like together and then as I use my joint knife I will add additional like little swipes of colors on top of these so I'll post a co couple pics also once I pull my phone out of the cradle so I think I'm pretty happy with those colors. Okay, so not sure. So it's 622. That didn't take very long at all, which is good because this shouldn't take you long to do it all. Um, get your prep set up. If you're doing six drawers, do all the bottoms first and then let it dry and go back and do all the tops. The way I've done this, it does not need to be distressed at all. And Thank you for watching and watching the replay.